Activision Blizzard are constantly under fire for their behavior when it comes to both their consumers but also their employees. Well, things keep on getting a bit worse for them with allegations of violating French labor law coming their way. Hey everyone and welcome back to another industry report in your daily series where we go behind the more interesting gaming news topics. Today we're talking about Activision Blizzard and not for anything positive. Saying that though, as with all things, there are multiple motives that we do need to keep track of here. So, Game Workers Unite and Solidaires Informatique have released statements on the recent layoffs of Blizzard employees in France. Now when this was reported on, many of us, myself included, brought up that French labor laws are rather complex and that that did make the process a bit more difficult for the employer, leading to a lot of delays for the employees and them not really being sure of what their fate would be. However, according to a press release from the two unions, Blizzard may not have followed the law to the letter. The press release, which was also sent to my email address and seemingly a bunch of other YouTubers and press people, asks if the layoffs were necessary economically or if it's a simple case of outsourcing. They, in the same mail, answer that question themselves by saying, no, according to French labor laws, companies are not allowed to fire employees simply to satisfy shareholders and without ensuring that people will be able to find a new uh, place of work in the best possible conditions. Now, this lines up clearly with Activision Blizzard's reason for their restructuring. They are cutting costs in unnecessary areas to use the resources in better locations to improve their business. I mean, really, isn't that the goal of just about any publicly traded company? Hire employees that create more value and increase your profit margins. I mean, that's what they're doing, uh, but that's not really the whole story. The press release followed by saying, no, according to French labor laws, a company cannot lay off employees without substantial severance pay, citing economic uh, reasons and the record profits at the same time, of course, referencing what Blizzard had been saying at that time. These unions claim that because Activision Blizzard were celebrating their record profits, but were also discussing restructuring for economic reasons, that doing both of those things essentially is violating French labor law, which is, of course, very protective of workers. In France, there must be a clear and strong justification when you are letting an employee go. The unions point out that Activision Blizzard stock decreased sharply after the abysmal BlizzCon of November 2018, and that they laid off employees shortly after, which, of course, led to Game Workers Unite starting their clearly very unsuccessful Fire Bobby Kotick campaign. They also claim that their stock price was artificially raised by this move, which doesn't exactly add up. Their price has been fluctuating, sure, but if you only look at the date the layoffs were reported, you see a boost in their like in their stock. However, saying that conclusively, uh, given their performance during the time and preceding and following, that is quite a bullish statement. The press release then does also go on to detail how it is public that some of the positions were actually moved from France to their existing Irish office, which does raise some genuine questions about no longer needing those positions. Because if you didn't need the positions, why would you just move them from France to Ireland. All in all, they are moving against these layoffs, which the, the unions consider to be unfair. Ironically, though, the strength of French labor laws actually run counter to some of the union's claims. They outlined that the French layoffs were handled through a PSE, which translates to a job protection plan. They even helpfully provide a diagram for one in their press release. Basically, in France, when a company is dismissing more than 10 employees, they have to go through, legally, they have to go through a process involving employee representatives and the government. This process ensures that the restructuring makes sense economically, that it's following the law, and that the employees are catered to, including keeping them employed, maybe under a different role in the company, or helping them find a new job. Now, in this process, if the PSC is found to be complying with uh, French law, which is, of course, something that only happens after scrutiny by the state, then the dismissals will begin three months later. That all seems kind of fair, right? That, like, process that you've got to go through in France. Well, that actually seems to have been what happened with Blizzard. So then, how are the unions claiming that the laws were not followed. Given their points about satisfying shareholders and the lack of substantial severance pay, it seems that they disagree with how well the employees were compensated and catered to in the process, and that they're then seeking information and then, of course, disgruntled employees to help them in their case. And I suppose that's the thing here. The unions are saying all of this stuff, but seemingly the French state disagree because Blizzard must have went through the whole, you know, PSE process as, like, validated or, you know, checked in uh, with by the state 
which means that there's clearly a bit of disharmony between what the union thinks is going on and what the French state and French labor laws think is going on. So really the unions seem to be calling for a re-examination of things. And I think this is where we do need to look behind the curtain. Activision Blizzard's motives are fairly clear here. They want to outsource where it's cheaper, and they want to reduce any unnecessary costs, even if that requires people losing their livelihood. That is just one of the sacrifices that sometimes ends up being made in business, sadly. Saying that, though, they also have little motive to break French labor law. That's not in their favor. They clearly did not try to do it too aggressively, because if they did, it would have been caught during the PSE process. The unions, though, they do have a horse in this race beyond just the protection of the employees involved, and they do state as much. They say that even if it's difficult now, that they hope to inspire and encourage others around the globe to unionize. They mention that French labor code is under attack from politicians, but that the unions are fighting to uphold it. And this is really the most important part of this video now. Without going too in-depth, French labor laws have been cited as a potential cause for high unemployment and lessened investment in the country, a country which has had notoriously flat GDP, with the recent easing of some labor laws correlating with a decrease in unemployment. That's not conclusive by any means or anything like that, and it is clear that the unions are trying to make the situation as good for employees as is possible in their view, and that is a sort of noble endeavor, but there is a push and pull between employees and employers. If either have too much power, then problems can occur, and ultimately it's in the best interest of everyone if there is a healthy balance there, and it's just about working out where that line is. You see, ultimately, we're in a globalized economy. That means that companies are going to be able to move around the world as they see fit and as is best for their business. They, in many cases, will be doing nothing illegal by doing that. In fact, in many cases, it is their responsibility to their share uh, shareholders to, uh, to do so. Now, companies compete with each other through their products and their services. We all know that. We experience it every day. But we can't forget that countries also compete with each other, not through products and services, but through law. How easy is it to start up a business? What's the corporate tax rate? Do the labor laws allow for the scaling up and down of your business operations to meet the demands of your business? In this case, it very much seems like France are kind of losing out to some other countries. That's why Macron, in spite of the Yellow Vest movement, he has been trying to uh, make the country more open for business. Now, I'm not making any political statements or opinion statements on that, but that's seemingly what his response to some of these issues has been. Obviously, it's one that has been met by just with significant blowback in France. But contrast this with Ireland, you know, and that's apparently where some of the Blizz uh, roles are going to. Ireland is pretty much a tax haven. Clearly, that is parts of the Irish law being well aligned for foreign investment and that working out in the favor of Ireland. So as you can see here, while competition between businesses is really important and seeing how all that plays out is important, we also need to take into account the competition between countries because the countries are the people who dictate the rules by which the game is played. And when it comes to a situation like this with Blizzard, that is very important indeed. Uh, now, though, I'd also like you to consider what game uh, workers Unite want. They are targeting Activision Blizzard for violating labor laws now, and then back in February, their response was the campaign for the firing of Bobby Kotick. That move, I think, despite being full of good intentions, is frankly out of touch with reality. To me, at least, it brings both their motives and their understanding of things into question as a group. It almost feels like they're holding a grudge and they're trying to fight a battle on advantageous ground where the labor laws are a bit more strong. Activision Blizzard are a great enemy to fight as well, especially if you consider the optics of the situation. They are public enemy number one, so if you want to make good PR gains, they are the people who you will target, and you will target them on favorable ground, like France. Now, that's not to decry their intent here, it's just me sort of calling what they're actually doing, what their game plan clearly is. Now, unionization is an important topic for the industry to discuss, especially when it comes to accusations of workplace harassment and the stories of crunch that seem to be industry-wide. Now is a good time for employees to feel empowered and emboldened to better the situations, absolutely, like what we've seen with the Riot Games employees. Game Workers Unite have been involved in good moves as well. Earlier on uh, this month, they made a stand along with, um, I think it was Solidarity Informatique, I think it was, uh, to aid Quantic Dream employees with the, quote, presence of potential sexual predators. However, just with all of this, it's wise to keep everyone's motives in mind when you're examining how they're operating. Activision Blizzard laid off employees to increase the profit margins. 
operating entirely in their own self-interest as a company. Game Workers Unite and Solidarity Informatique, they are also going to be operating in their own interests with their own aims, whatever they may be. So honestly, it's a very complex situation. It really is quite large. It's involving countries, it's involving businesses, different sets of laws, the rules by which it's all played. And as much as the moves of large businesses are met with suspicion, and all, I mean, rightly so, I'd say, we also have to do the same with all the other organizations, especially whenever an organization is claiming to just be undeniably in our favor. I think that's when they should be scrutinized a little bit more, because at least a business will generally be up front with their assholery, you know, and just saying, hey, we just want money. And going back to this situation, well, while employees are receiving a significant benefit in the short term from the strong labor laws and unions moving in their favor, when you look at the overall economic picture, you know, could those things being stronger lead to lessened competitiveness from the French video game sector, which ultimately might not be great for people working in that sector in France. While I believe that heavy crunch and tight production schedules are massively detrimental to games, if companies do lose their agility in hiring and if labor laws become too restrictive, then we could see, you know, contractions in the local industries of some areas in that front, especially when it comes to AA studios and indies. A lot of the times they cannot afford to face the same restrictions that the massive multi-billion publishers do. Uh, in many cases with, say, an indie game, right, it's sometimes those games are as great as they are because a few individuals will go absolutely mad. It's not the way everyone should do it. It's not what's recommended, but, uh, you know, should, should they have the choice to do so or not? I'm not exactly sure. It's definitely a touchy subject for many. And in the current climate, it's definitely something that's worth thinking about. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what your thoughts are on the topics uh, covered today. I'm really excited to hear what you think about Game Workers Unite and Activision Blizzard butting heads where the labor laws should go. And uh, just, you know, how much of a role you think... Um, just how much of a role all of the regulation and stuff should have. I really, really want to hear what you think. So thank you very much for watching. And with that, I'll see you next time.